coming up next is a special address on India's Atmanirbhar Roadmap for Next Generation Technologies. I would like to welcome N.G. Subramaniam, Chief Operating Officer of TCS and Chairman TSDSI for this session. Over to you, Mr. Subramaniam. Distinguished speakers, industry colleagues, guests, ladies and gentlemen, my sincere greetings and best wishes to all of you. Let me begin by thanking ET Telecom for inviting me to this 5G Congress virtual summit. I have had the privilege of engaging with the leaders across the industry and government over time globally. This gave me the opportunity to observe business, technology, and regulatory trends, and listen to the futurist views on what the experience is going to be in the times ahead. I hope to share some of those insights as it applies to the world of telecom, the experience it is likely to give to consumers and enterprises, and in that context, the implications for India the world of standardization and technology development. Development of 5G is on its way, while the discussion about 6G technologies and corresponding research activities have started all over the world. Standardization in 3GPP is just about to enter the second phase of 5G with 5G advanced, starting from release 18 now. At TSDSI, we have started to track the scope of canvas that is getting addressed in 5G advanced across core, RAN, transport, and other dimensions. We are encouraging our members to participate in the study, formulation of use cases, and prototypes so that we can contribute to these work items regionally and globally at ITU and 3GPP forums. Our LMLC or 5G technology or India's rural coverage requirements have been well accepted and work is underway to merge these at 3GPP, hopefully in release 17. These efforts have been significant and there are tremendous learnings towards contributing to the 4G, 5G standards and the process therein. We've also understood the complexities involved in being part of the ecosystem so that such innovations are globally harmonized, interoperable, and compatible. 6G-related standardization activities are assumed to start around 2025, while first 6G deployments are expected to be around 2030. It's obvious that some of the shortfalls and realized requirements of 5G will be pushed into 6G. Millimeter wave technologies, massive MIMO, dense networks, or some areas in that sense that will be kind of moved away from the 5G scope into the 6G, or incrementally it'll get addressed in the 6G. In addition, new waveforms beyond OFDM, such as GFDM or generalized frequency division multiplexing, FBMC, filter bank multi-carrier, UFMC, universal filtered multi-carrier, will come into play and they will all coexist and Many adaptive schemes are likely to, to be in place that will help in utilizing different waveforms adaptively as the requirements call for. Multiple access schemes may be investigated and in the field of modulation, alternatives for a much lower peak to average power ratio so that the final amplifier can operate more efficiently. Similarly, there is potential to go beyond FDD and TDD to include flexible duplex or division-free duplex, which would enable simultaneous transmission and reception on the channel. Beyond the obvious, the technology and equipment out of all, the, all of these are expected to be trusted, secure, distributed and native over the cloud, intelligent and artificial intelligence driven, sustainable and above all affordable. All these areas are for us to innovate and create technology for global applicability. 
we need to accelerate and synergize our efforts so that India can participate holistically and lead the IP creation in certain areas. In future, experiential applications and influence standards for the future. Now is the time to work on the enabling technologies and to join the worldwide discussion on use cases, functionalities, and key performance indicators of 6G. 6G networks are expected to be characterized by peak data rate, reliability, latency, connection density, and location accuracy of a tall order. People say that at least a 10x improvement over 5G will be there in 6G. These will surely contribute to improved service quality on current KPIs. However, the user expectations will move more towards experience than merely service quality. Such an expectation on experience will be driven by the convergence of the physical and the biological world with the digital domain. For example, real-time monitoring of plants, remote control of machinery, remote surgery, telemedicine, interactive learning, augmented reality, virtual reality, extended reality, all will redefine human-machine interactions. Likewise, smart grids, smart agriculture, grid access communication, digital TV convergence, better sporting experience, et cetera, et cetera, will all get reimagined for a frictionless experience. With 6G, it is expected that work will not flow, but will get done seamlessly, interactively, and intuitively. I have come across several companies who are involved in designing the next generation of experience or experience-driven products for the consumers and enterprises. I, exp I observe that the traditional left to right method of designing products is giving way to the right to left methods, wherein the experience drives product features rather than merely the capabilities. Many have realized that if the experience of buying, using, servicing, and disposing of a product is becoming the key for customers to choose a particular product over another. So friends, it is extremely important to develop our products and solutions of the future, taking into consideration the work that has already been done, anchor or participate in the telecom ecosystems of the world and create a name and place for ourselves globally. The realization that we will not be able to do everything ourselves at least in the short to medium term is critical while we lay the foundation for a self-reliant India in the field of semiconductors, chip design, fabless and fabs, leading to custom chip development and SOCs, which are crucial to developing the next generation of telecom equipments. Equally important is the software that goes into these chips that operates on top of the chips to facilitate the management, reconfiguration, administration, and monitoring of networks, they will need to facilitate a self-healing, self-governing, and responsible AI, ML, and deep learning techniques will drive the softwareization of the network, no doubt. India needs to streamline its research and development efforts and investments from the academia, private, and public institutions towards the larger cost of being self-reliant. This would call for certain unified actions. Firstly, an aligned vision for the future of 5G, 6G in terms of the outcome that we want to see in India. For India, across coverage, capacity, experience, trust and security. Secondly, encourage and steer investments in R&D across the various dimensions of network, radios, antennas, compute and storage, and experiential applications, keeping in mind the evolutions that have already taken place globally. Our focus should be on evolving architectures and products that will be loosely coupled, interoperable, so that the deployment of the network can be disaggregated or aggregated as the situation and the environment demands it. Thirdly, fiberization, satellite communication, and spectrum distribution towards the last mile connectivity, enterprise and private networks are essential for the deployment of the experiential applications. But 
sufficient to say that we need to do some blue sky thinking and we will need to use the latest technology, technology that does not exist today. This means we must foresee where the technology is likely to be in the year 2025 to 2030 and accordingly define the art of possible and use cases for the industries and consumers alike. In such an environment, it is utmost important to consider the requirements of the network of 2030 by concept visualization and validation in a highly open ecosystem across access, core, transport, devices, and the application domains to produce tangible results. Department of Telecommunications and the Government of India are aiming to promote products, platforms, skills, and competencies that are required towards a self-reliant India. The onus is on the industry and the academia to synergize our efforts and leverage the channels and incentive schemes that are offered by the government. It is also timely as more and more of the future of telecom technology is going to be driven by the cloud and software, which are India's strength. Thank you, and Jai Hind. Thank you, Mr. Subramaniam, for bringing such an interesting and valuable content to the table. Certainly, it was a knowledge piece. Now let's delve deeper into more such content. Stay tuned, everyone.